what if I told you that over 200 years ago, some of the best oysters in the world were being harvested here? When Europeans first arrived in New York Harbor, there were oyster reefs everywhere, 200,000 acres of oyster reef. They were once a big part of the culture of New York, part of the food culture of New York. Oysters used to be sold on basically like hot dog carts. What happened to them? Uh, we ate them. Early New York boomed on an oyster economy, but it turns out these oyster reefs had a much more important role. As our oceans get warmer and sea levels continue to rise, scientists expect future hurricanes to be bigger and more powerful. We had tragedy happen in Superstorm Sandy. People lost their lives. There were waves hitting structures because this rich 3D mosaic of protective wetlands is no longer there. That's something a team of designers and engineers are trying to solve. Funded by a federal disaster relief grant and designed by SCAPE, a landscape architecture firm, the Living Breakwaters Project is meant to safeguard part of New York City's coastline. It's a roughly two mile long uh, chain of breakwaters that are designed in an ecological way to um, create fish habitat. It is uh, reducing risk and the incredible wave action that was faced uh, by communities. And a major component of the project is the small and briny oyster. Oysters are ecosystem engineers in the harbor. They help to agglomerate and create reefs. They filter water, they clean water. The oyster reefs actually reduce the impact of storms and storm surges and things like that. When you had a complex three-dimensional shoreline that has both oyster reefs and salt marsh and all of that working together. In other words, before New Yorkers polluted and over-harvested their harbor, oyster reefs used to provide a natural protection against big waves, like the ones produced by Hurricane Sandy. Without the oyster reefs and with you know, the whole shoreline has fundamentally changed, New York is more vulnerable to storms. That's why, since 2014, the nonprofit Billion Oyster Project has been working to restore the city's oyster reefs. The group starts by collecting restaurants' discarded oyster shells, drying them, and then seeding them with oyster larvae. Once back in the water, those shells become the habitat for other oysters to build on. So far, about 28 million oysters have been installed in various sites around the harbor. And while the water quality of the harbor has improved, the number of oysters in the water is only a tiny portion of what it used to be, and they're still not safe to eat. But something recently changed. For restoration to be successful, you need the rec recruitment of wild oysters from the system. Meaning wild baby oysters need to be able to find these reef installations in order to latch on and establish a home for themselves. That's something we've seen in very small numbers periodically over the years. So then we started looking in earnest at all of our sites around the city, and it, it's true for just about everywhere we have oysters. That this year, there's just a lot more natural recruitment. It's a baby Aww. oyster! Oh my Wait, goodness! That's so cool! And so that's a, a really exciting sign. A large-scale arrival of wild baby oysters is good news for the Living Breakwaters Project. Oysters are not going to keep the water out of New York, but oysters that combined with breakwaters can be an integrated solution. These breakwaters are seeded with oysters and the oysters will agglomerate on the structure, attach onto it, grow and form their own kind of layer of complexity on top. It's also a social enterprise in the sense that we're engaging school children and um, teachers through the Billion Oyster Project. So these guys are basically forming a reef, wow. right? They're building more and more structure. The Living Breakwaters Project will be in construction through 2020, but rebuilding an entire ecosystem can take time. Orff thinks that by 2050, the habitat around the breakwaters will be fully revitalized. I think New Yorkers need to get into this new paradigm of being a coastal city again, living with water, embracing our watery context, not fortifying ourselves off, but, uh, but understanding what it means to, to live with this kind of risk and really preparing for it and being smart about it. Mm -hmm.